welcome to the Developer Primer about Svelte with Gavin Raykemper and myself, Jacob Wasikowski. And we can both be found online on Twitter, at Gavin Raykemper and at jwazzlegeo. Svelte's tagline is cybernetically enhanced web apps. The good thing is we're not building anything as complicated as an Android or a cyborg. And we know that actually logic is relevant as programmers. So Svelte is a way to make web applications with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So Svelte makes some bold claims. It claims that it's a radical new approach to building user interfaces. And I'd argue this is true. It does a lot of its work in the compile step. So when you're building your code that you've written to be easily understood and readable by the browser, you end up with some pretty lightweight HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Svelte also claims that you write less code, there's no virtual DOM, and that it's truly reactive. Let's dive right in and investigate the structure of a component in Svelte. A Svelte component typically ends in a .svelte file extension, which really is an HTML document. They can have JavaScript, HTML, and CSS with a few extra Svelte helpers. So beginning on line one, we have a script tag, and this is where our JavaScript lives. We have a count variable, starting with the value zero, followed by a function named handle click, whose only role is to increment the count value by one. Beginning on line nine, we have a very simple HTML markup, which is really just a button. And here Svelte gives us the ability to have an on-click handler which is going to talk to the handle click function. It, the button's content is the word clicked, followed by the current count value from that variable, followed by a small ternary statement that it will evaluate to time or times, depending on the value of count. And then in this online example available on Svelte's website, I've inserted a style tag to provide scoped styling for a button. Every time the user clicks the button, our count is increased by one because handle click is called. And our contents of the button immediately react to that and show the updated state. Sometimes we want to do a little bit more with our HTML and Svelte has a few mechanisms to help with logic. The if-else block is exactly what it sounds like. It will conditionally render HTML if a certain condition is met or not met. So in this other component, we have a script tag with the variable user being set to an object with a logged in property defaulting to the value false. We then set up a function named toggle whose only job is to flip the value of user.loggedIn from false to true, true to false, false to true, and so on. Beginning on line nine is our HTML markup. So if user.loggedIn is true, we're going to show a button with an on-click handler wired up to the toggle function. And its contents will be log out. Else, otherwise, if user.loggedIn is false, we'll show the login button also wired up to talk to the toggle function. Another really useful Svelte HTML logic helper is an each block. So let's consider a new component. The JavaScript simply defines the variable cats as an array with three objects inside. Each has an ID and a name. The ID is actually a YouTube unique identifier and the name is just the text that we want to show in our HTML. Beginning on line nine is our HTML markup. We have an h1 tag with our own header text, followed by an unordered list on line 11. Inside of that, we use the svelte each block. And this will help us loop over each of the cats. And we can pull out the ID and name properties for each cat and the zero base index as well. So for each cat, we're going to create a list item with its own anchor tag inside of it and the anchor tag will read as the zero base index plus one, colon space, the name value. So keyboard cat, Maru, and Henry the existential cat. What's really interesting on line 13 
just above, you'll see the href is also evaluated dynamically. So we have the base YouTube URL. At the very end, we're also inserting that unique identifier from our cats array. One last HTML logic helper that I'd like to show you is an await promise block. In this component, we have a longer script tag that we'll walk through, followed by a button, finally followed by the await promise block. So back up in our script, we have a promise variable that calls get random number the first time. And get random number is, a, is an asynchronous function that does a little bit of fetching and asynchronous work on the inside to generate either a random number or throw an error. Towards the end of our script tag, we have the handle click function, which by now you've probably guessed is going to be wired up to a button. And it will simply reuse that promise variable and reassign it to a new call to get random number. So on line 20 is our button with the svelte click handler, again, talking to the handle click function and the inner text of that button will be generate random number. So starting on line 24 is our await promise block. This is where we will show up to three different kinds of P tags in our HTML. So if the promise is running and we're waiting on it to finish, we'll show dot, dot, dot waiting. When it finishes, we'd actually like to show the value of the number. Otherwise, if it results in an error, style our text red and show the error message. So this is an example of Svelte giving us a big time saver when writing a user interface that relies on an asynchronous operation that can take an unknown amount of time, resolve successfully, or fail with an error. All right, so at this point, I'll hand it off to Gavin. So far, we've dealt exclusively with internal state. That is to say, the values are only accessible within a given component. In a real application, you'll need to pass data from one component down to its children. To do that, we need to declare properties, generally shortened props, or for this presentation, mad props. Similar to React or Vue, you can pass variables as props through the component tag. Here we have a typical component, app, that is importing a child component, nested. Here in the nested component, we have our reactivity example of where the value of the JavaScript variable answer is being shown on the page. What if we want to make this into a prop so we can pass in a value for answer from the previous app component? All we have to do is add the export keyword to our variable. Now Svelte expects a variable to come from the parent. That's why it's currently undefined. Let's set it in the parent. So here we've passed 42 as the value, as the answer. And now it's showing in our page. Remember reactivity from before, where we did the on click? Well, we can do that same thing for our custom components, defining events in them by name. Here's an example Svelte component, where we've included a child component, inner. In the markup at the bottom, we're saying when the message event is emitted, call our local function handle message. It's similar to the on colon click syntax as before. To emit that event, you use Svelte's create event dispatcher. We create an instance of the dispatcher and then call that function every time we want to emit an event with the event name as the first parameter and the payload as the second parameter. So here, when we click the button, it will dispatch our event and show the alert box, which we set up in the parent component before. Events are great for passing information up to the parent, but once you build a large enough app, you may have many components, and to pass an event up or props down may take a lot of code. Stores solve this problem. A store is simply an object with a subscribe method that allows interested parties to be notified whenever the store value changes, no matter where that component is in the application. A store is a simple thing to create. Just include the writable store from Svelte and call the writable function, passing the initial value as the parameter.
Now to use the store, we import it, remember it was named count earlier, and then call the subscribe function on it. Every time the value changes, this function will get called. So every time it changes, we update our local display variable. To update the store, we've added a button with a click handler. Every time the button is clicked, we call the update function on our store variable. We pass in a function that updates the value. Now we are at DevSummit, so we thought we'd mention how to use this with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. You can use the Esri Loader project, just npm install Esri Loader, and then include it in the rollup.config.js, just like this. Once you've included it like that, you can use Esri Loader just like any other Esri Loader app. So here you can see it on line two, we're including the Esri Loader. On line 12, we're using the spelts on mount function to wait until the component has loaded. On line 16, we're using Esri Loader to load the modules from the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. And then finally, on line 22, we're use, utilizing the Esri map from the JavaScript API. The next idea would be to take those concepts and wrap the ArcGIS map object in its own Svelte component. Jacob has a GitHub repository that shows how to do this. Once you've done that, you can simply import your map using HTML style syntax, which is great, just like this. So if you go to this example site, you can see that Jacob's included many instances of the map using Svelte and his component super easily. You might be wondering who is using Svelte. It's admittedly still small and growing, but a there are a variety of big companies using it in production. I pulled this graphic from the Svelte website. And Jacob and I, through our Esri work, have been able to use it on multiple mapping web applications. And we hope to see more of it in 2020. Here's some resources. The main Svelte website is at svelte.dev. There's a really, really good tutorial if you want to learn Svelte. Just go through the tutorial at slash tutorial there. Svelte has a really good community, of uh, chat community. Um, you can get there at svelte.dev slash chat. And then we also included some links to some really good articles about Svelte uh, that you can find our uh, slides online and uh, hit the links here. Svelte has a sibling library called Sapper. The idea of Sapper is that you can build a single page web application with navigation and SEO all built in where each page is a Svelte component. Mind blown, right? Check it out, it's pretty good um, and it's a great way to create a uh, web app. So that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching and uh, have fun using Svelte.